Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Jed Morgan, and I know that I've been making a lot of Witcher videos recently, but there's just been so much news about the show and the franchise as a whole recently that I can't help but talk about all of it. And today there is another piece of news that once again destroys the canon utterly and is just a cheap ploy to insert diversity, insert their fan fiction at Netflix into this franchise and say that theirs is better anyway and that the original canon isn't actually any good. It very much proves with every piece of this news the words put out there by Bo DeMeo that these writers actively dislike the source material and despise it so much that they have no qualms about destroying it utterly. And this news comes from an interview with Lauren Histridge that the Redanian Intelligence has written up for us, and this is probably the worst lore break that they have at this point. It says, The Witcher Blood origin adds a lore change to Ciri's ancestry. As you can tell from that image, this woman is going to be Ciri's ancestor. That's a problem. That's a problem in so many different ways because they're not just adding her as an ancestor. They're adding in her mate into the situation and that's a problem as well because at this time, yes, Laura Dern probably shouldn't exist yet at this point age-wise because she's kind of a result of selective breeding that takes place after the time of the conjunction of the spheres in reaction to the Ein El scene, the devolution of the Ein Shea. So yes, she shouldn't exist yet, but her father, King Oberon, is very much a player at this point in history and... He hasn't been announced in this show whatsoever, so instead of having the lore-accurate ancestor at this point, King Oberon, who is probably one of the biggest villains in the actual Witcher books and a major player, they're taking him out of the story entirely at this point, or just reducing him and replacing him with these scrappy rebels fighting these empire that is evil in this new show, and it's all ridiculous. The bloodline is what's important. The Elder Bloodline stretches back into the homeworld of the Ainan dude millennia prior to the conjunction of the spheres, and it's a royal bloodline, as shown by King Oberon. These two characters, including this woman here on the left, they're not royals. They're part of these weird clans, and apparently there's kingdoms, and then inside those kingdoms are clans, and those clans' responsibilities are specifically to protect the royal family. It's like they're calling the King's Guard clans instead of King's Guard. It's a really weird situation. But they're taking away her royal bloodline. There's no evidence of elder blood in either of them, which isn't necessarily an issue, but there should be some reference of it, especially at this time period with these elder blood carriers. They're just destroying canon to say, oh, look, Siri, those are our new fanfic characters. Series descended from them. It's cheap and lazy storytelling that totally contradicts canon at every single opportunity. But let's get into Lauren Histridge's actual comments here. So I can't pronounce this character's name. It's some weird pronunciation. It's like an I or an A or something like that. Something that really doesn't make sense from the actual letter usage. But apparently she is going to be Ciri's millennia distant ancestor. And that doesn't make sense canonically. If this were the planet of the Ainan dude, millennia prior to the conjunction, yes, you can make up any ancestor that you want. But Ciri's bloodline is mapped out precisely prior to the conjunction of the spheres, pretty much from the age of migration to Ciri, it's mapped out and needs to happen in that way because the elder bloodline is so important. It passing from one person to another with activator and latent genes. It's mapped out so thoroughly. This random character thrust into it to replace King Oberon does nothing but to eradicate any stability gained from that important family tree. So Lauren Histard says, this elf is pregnant at the end and we know that that parts of Ithling prophecy that there is a seed in her that will eventually lead to someone important in the witcher world they're taking the important line from Ithling's prophecy that says it will be reborn of elder blood of hen ish shower of the seed that has been sown they're like oh it said seed has been sown we can put the seed in this lady's belly and it'll work out fine they're trying to justify it with Ithling's prophecy no the seed that has been shown is absolutely a reference to siri yes but it doesn't reference this woman at all. That is a cheap justification that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So as someone who is the Witcher side, follow Ciri and the origin of her genes and her blood. It's kind of like, I want to know where that character is going to go. And this is being used to justify the title of the series is Blood Origin. And I thought this show was going to be about Lord Dirt. And that's where that was going to come from is the Blood Origin aspect. No, they're just made up some elf and it's like, oh, this is Ciri's ancestor. And so this is the source of her bloodline even though the show's not about that at all. So the title is just cheap 
excuse to make this random character series ancestor. I want to know if those things are going to crash into each other at some point. And apparently Fjall from the trailers, the male elf with the beard, is going to be this elf's partner and the other ancestor of Ciri. Where is King Oberon? Oberon came over at the time of the Age of Migration. So we should have zero ancestors for Ciri besides Oberon and his wife, who we also know who she is. Why are you adding in these random characters? Oh, wait, it's to legitimize your own stupid spinoffs and legitimize your franchise. This is probably one of the most egregious lore breaks that this franchise and this spinoff specifically are perpetuating. You can't just conjure up random characters into this important of a character's backstory and family tree just to justify their existence and act like they're somehow important to the overall story. It's cheap and lazy storytelling that justifies a pathetic attempt to tie into the main Witcher show, which they don't need. They already have enough tie-ins with just the mere existence of the conjunction of the spheres. I just can't believe that they went this far. Uh, I didn't think that they were going to dive this badly into destroying the lore. I had low expectations, and boy, before the show even came out, they destroyed those low expectations and became so, so much worse. We'll have to wait and see for those four disastrous, just four episodes, disastrously destroying the lore of The Witcher in two weeks now. But those four episodes... Man, they're going to pack a punch. They're going to be rife with every single second destroying canon from everything that we know about the show going forward. And this will be the worst example of it so far. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Anon. Hey, yo, are you feeling what I'm doing up in here? Oh, I know you are. Do you miss... All the good, compelling stories that we used to get back in Hollywood that they ain't putting down no more. Oh, oh, I know you missing it. So check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern day mental illness issues, baby. Book one, Down in Flames. Book two, Apocalypse Then. These are currently on sale. What are you waiting for? Get your hands on them. And we got book three, Kill the Dark, is coming down the pipeline. Just wait for all the good stuff that's dropping. You ain't gonna be disappointed, fam.